This is the Gaumont British News, presenting the truth to the free peoples of the world. A little while ago, there was a conference of chiefs of staff somewhere in North Africa. All settled, let's get going. Alamein, Tobruk, Tripoli, Tunis passed from news to history, prelude to a sea crossing to the continent of Europe. Now the future has become the news of the day. These are the unforgettable hours charged with the destiny of centuries. All we have lived and worked for. Not final victory yet, but this is the strength that gives us the golden chance of victory. The mightiest invasion fleet that ever sailed started from many ports on many shores. Canadians, Americans, and the Eighth Army. First with the Canadians who sailed direct from Britain to achieve at long last their burning desire for full-scale action. The convoy passes off Cape Bond the scene of the final smashing of the Axis grip on Africa. Past Malta, the sea grows rougher in tribute to the stormy story of George Cross Island. Somewhere in the Mediterranean, in perfect coordination and timing, separate combined operations expeditions fuse and join into a gigantic invasion. Navy, army, protected overhead by a sure shield of warplanes. More than 2,000 ships to attack the first stronghold of the fortress of Europe. from the shore the beating heart of hope reborn? Can you hear in the distance the stirring of life in chains? The fleet rides closer and closer to the open drawbridge of the Axis castle. Mussolini has lived for 20 years his glittering, vainglorious heyday. His island outposts have already fallen. Over Italy, the fascist sun is setting. The tracer coming in from the left is from machine guns on the shore. of July the 10th, 1943, the seaborne invasion of Europe began. The Army of Liberation set foot on Sicilian sands.
Enemy batteries on land drew heavy fire from battleships of the escort. Mushroom smoke pillars recorded the deadly weight of exploding steel. You would have expected terrific dive bombing from the Luftwaffe. Our fighter cover kept most of it up, but some bombs and machine guns did harass the landing forces. Spitfires were shot down. And one of our supply ships received a direct hit. Spectacular proof that this landing was not a walkover. But our losses were lower than the most optimistic could have dared to guess. There were no casualties from this ship. All hands were saved. At night, a hospital ship had been deliberately sunk. In the morning, Survivors were still being picked up and transferred to another hospital ship. This was the day scene on the beach. And now our camera goes ashore on one of the amphibious lorries. The ducks is grounded. Through that day and on succeeding days, reinforcements of men and supplies continued to land. Men, tanks, guns and ammunition. A tremendous army to make success no gamble, but a certain reward of brilliant planning and supreme efficiency. These are Canadians moving inland on the first advance from wayside cottages Sicilians watched with no sign of surprise or hatred. Offshore, the great fleet lay at anchor while still more supplies came in, still protected by the superb air cover, our newly perfect cooperation between all branches of service. And through the Mediterranean surf and up those beaches, the invasion hourly gained in strength. Here, as in Africa, many Italians surrendered gladly. Hundreds growing into thousands. And these strange enemies were glad to help in landing our supplies. Could there be better proof than this that they have hated the cause for which they were forced to fight? After day, we learn how we massed increasing strength. What does it matter whether Italians wanted to fight or not? Italy came in on the side of Germany, stabbed France in the back when she was on the verge of defeat. Italy still in the war is an obstacle on our way to victory and peace. Let Italians find their own sympathy for their own soldiers, while we find praise and gratitude for ours. Mm -hmm.